Our scoreboard tonight provided by Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Wapak and Delphus. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, home style, happens here. Clock about to start ticking on the Lee's Famous Recipe scoreboard as Wapak will kick off to Hamilton Baden. We talked about Braden Moore, number 11 for the Hamilton Baden Rams, who is a University of Cincinnati commit, a power five wide receiver. Uh, quarterback Alex Ritzy has thrown 24 touchdowns this year and 15 of them have gone to Moore as the kick with the wind to the back of Kyle Beach goes deep into the end zone for the touchback and the Redskins gonna make Baden go 80 yards to start the game, John. Yeah, it's gonna be interesting to see kind of how this Walpog defense, which has really been a, a really good defense all year, how they match up with this Baden offense. It's highly explosive like you talked about. And I guess, you know, the, the person to, to watch is, uh, you know, we, we want to look at Alex Ritzy obviously, and see what he does and how he's able to distribute the ball. But Braden Moore, that, that key figure there, it's going to be interesting to see. So Ritzy will be in the gun with three receivers to his left to start the ball game. As the clock yet to get going on that Lee's Famous Recipe scoreboard. And Wapak now will bring several guys up and drop back into coverage. As Ritzy points out the defensive movements by the Redskins. In the gun and will fire quickly to get the game started. Ball caught at the 24-yard line, spun out of bounds. Ball caught by Carson Cheek for Baden. He had 22 receptions coming into tonight and has one there to start the ball game. Yeah, it's kind of interesting. Baden came out and kind of did a, a play where they came out and were set and then tried to call another play. But I don't think they really called another play. I just think they were doing that for to be fancy because that's a bubble screen from the get-go. And I like what Walpock's doing here. As you see, Baden's trying to shift the, the formation based on defense. Walpock shifts their defense. Ritzy in the gun once again. Carter Russo in a running back to carry. And he's going to be brought down. It takes a big lick there from Corbin Mitchell from his linebacker spot, but it is enough for a Cook and Son first down for Baden. Yeah, Corbin Mitchell's been a really nice player all season long, 5'10", 165 pound senior. He's played that outside linebacker spot pretty aggressively, and they're gonna need him to have a great game tonight to be able to, to hold this offense to, to a, a place where that they're not, you know, lighting up the scoreboard like they, uh, like they typically do. Baden has scored 40 points in their last three games, and they've done it six times. Wampak obviously wants to keep that a little lower this week is off right tackle the run by Russo he's very close to the first down and he does pick up the cooking son first down he did get to the 41 yard line and got to the 42. Yeah really nice play by Russo see he's already he's pretty quick with those feet he makes a nice cut and looked like Tyler Hauser defensive lineman made that tackle deep at first I thought you know great for him to be hustling but I guess it's you know don't want to be making tackles 12 yards downfield as a defensive lineman. No you don't Zach Yorty in the ball game, the coach's son, the Hamilton Raiden Baden Rams, coached by Nick Yorty in his sixth season, led them to a state runner up finish a season ago. And his son, Zach, joining Russo in the backfield as Ritzy will send a man in motion. They got a false start penalty against the Rams. It's the first call of the quarter. Brought to you by Frost Roofing, family owned and operated for over 90 years. Join the Frost family. They're an equal opportunity employer. Call 419 739 Roof. Yeah, and I think if you're baiting tonight, those are the things that you just you can't afford. You, you know, talked about in the pregame, just playing your game, and you know they have an explosive enough offense to to not get yourself in first and 15 and first and 20 is just to not make those kinds of mistakes. Ritzy, the junior quarterback, and a gun on first and 15, will look to fire. Throws to the near side to Braden Moore. Caught the football. About a yard past the original line of scrimmage, so a six-yard gain there for Braden Moore. As we mentioned, the University of Cincinnati commit. 63 receptions for 884 yards and 15 touchdowns coming into tonight. Yeah, and you can see right away Walpock has, I wouldn't say double coverage, but they've got like one and a half men on him just making sure. And he took out, took off on that deep route, and they made sure they had deep coverage, and he shut that route off, route off quick so that they threw an underneath one. So three wide receivers bunched to the top of your screen as Ritzy will take the snap and roll that way. Fires. Ball hung in the air for quite a while. I believe Moore caught it anyway. He did. He's got the cooking son first down. Yeah, Alex Ritzy throws a really nice ball. He finds it between three Walpock defenders, and Walpock actually had it played very well, but you know, when Braden Moore's six foot two and he can jump, 
it's very hard to defend. He's throwing that ball into the wind, so that just really kind of showcases that arm strength there from Ritzy, the junior quarterback, to cut through this wind. And it is it is blustery. You can see it when we get closer to the goal line in the end zone there. That uh, it's Ritzy keeps it himself here. So doesn't need to worry about the wind when you keep it yourself down inside the 25-yard line, down at the 22. Big carry there for the junior quarterback, and they're very close to the Matt Seating and cooling red zone. And that's where, you know, they've, they've given the ball to Russo enough to where now they run the zone read. They're reading the defensive end, and, and now they see that defensive end crashing down, and Alex Ritzy keeps it for a huge gain. They're going to have to honor that quarterback now on the edge, so uh, they're going to have one less run defender in the run game. So it's second, or first down, excuse me, from the 23-yard line. Ritzy with Russo offset to his right. He'll turn and fire quickly, caught by Cheek. Cheek has a blocker in front of him, and he's going to get into the Matt's Heating and Cooling red zone. Tonight's red zone sponsor is Matt's Heating and Cooling. There your home is your home in the energy efficient zone. Call Matt's Heating and Cooling or go to callmattsheating.com to schedule your free estimate. As they are, they have the football spotted at the 17 yard line, so a five yard gain there for the Rams. Besides the penalty, really, Baden's been able to do kind of what they want to do. They've run the ball, they've thrown their screens, and they've found Braden Moore. A handoff. Russo, the carry. Russo inside the five-yard line. A host of Redskins able to cut him down. As Nate Metzger in on the tackle for Wapak. The ball spotted at the four-yard line. And the Hamilton Baden Rams are knocking on the door here in our first possession of the night. Yeah, Garrett, how many games have we done this year? And the running backs are all five foot eight, 170 pounds. I mean, I feel like that is the key, uh, the key detail you need, the key stat that you need to be a running back. Card Russo, he's a nice runner. Russo, the carry once again, bounces it out, and he's tackled in the open field. Nice play made by the Wapak D inside that five-yard line. Great tackle by Jordan Schneider for the Redskins. Yeah, Jordan Schneider does a great job of coming up and being aggressive, and uh, Caden Ware was there as well, helping him out and making sure he, he contained. And both those guys made a, a huge uh, first down play to kind of stop them in the red zone. Carter Russo, a little gimpy coming off their field, so Zach Yorty will check back in the ball game for the Rams at that running back spot. Ball spotted the three-yard line with 8-10 to go here in this first quarter on the least famous recipe scoreboard. Ritzy hands off to Yorty. Yorty at the goal line, but he's shoved backwards. Another nice stand inside the five by the Redskin D. will bring up third and goal. Yeah, really nice response by uh, Wapak to, to stand him up there. And Connor Mechstroth, you know, he's the guy that we, you know, when you typically talk about Wapak, you talk about him because he's their middle linebacker. He's got almost 60 tackles on the season. And just the leader of the defense. And now this brings up this interesting third and one, Garrett. You've seen Russo. You've seen Yordi. I wouldn't be surprised to see Alex Ritzy keep it or look for Braden Moore here. So third and goal from the one-yard line. A wing back in for the Rams. Ritzy with Yordi to his right. He'll hand off to Yordi, and he punches it in from a yard out for an Allen Davis insurance touchdown, the first for either squad tonight. Well, just a simple zone read play, and they've been able to give it to Yordi, and they've been pushing and making yards. And, you know, that's one of the things that Coach Moyer had listed in the pregame is that they're going to have to win the line of scrimmage. And right now, Baden is getting the best of Walpock's front five. So the Rams will line up in a funky formation, see how the Redskins handle it and whether they'll line up to kick the extra point, and they will. The snap is back to hold us down. The kick is up, and the Binkley Real Estate extra point is through the uprights and good. 7-0 Baden over Wapak. We'll step aside here on WOSN. Instant replays tonight brought to you by Owl's Woody's Diner in Wapakoneta. It's the place, the best place for pizza, wings, subs, and burgers. Give them a call at 419-738-9111. We mentioned that the Redskins told us, hey, we, we, we got to control the line of scrimmage. And they did inside the five-yard line there, John, for a couple of plays, but were uh, not able to keep the Rams out. And they punch one in from a yard out. And Wapak now finds themselves down 7-0. Yeah, and I think you're in this situation where um, uh, you've got the wind to your back, and that kind of concerns me that Baden kind of moved the ball going against the wind. And, 
you know, typically as a coach, you're going to say stuff like, well, the wind doesn't matter. Well, I'm going to tell you right now, the wind matters. <laughs> wind matters. Okay. Uh, and, and on a night like tonight, um, you know, if you have the wind in your favor, you got to take advantages of those uh, situations. So, Walpock's going to get the ball with the wind and hopefully can get some good uh, field position here on this kickoff. Um, as they're having trouble even keeping the ball in the tee. I, I went to the Ohio State Northwestern game last weekend in Chicago, and <laughs> you know you see all the like national pundits like, well, they only scored 21 points against Northwestern. I sat in the stands and thought that a willow tree outside the stadium was going to snap. I couldn't watch the game because I thought that thing is going to come down at some point. And it's it's a similar wind tonight here at Trotwood. Well, now it's not you know 45, 55 mile an hour gust, but it's a steady 30 mile an hour wind here. That and you're right when they were able to throw the ball a couple of times against the wind you got to wonder what that means for the for the Rams when they when they get it at their back yeah and I think the big thing too is just special teams I mean it changes that you know the complexity of your special teams now you have to you now you have a holder on your kickoff he's gonna have to kick it low he's gonna they're gonna have to punt low it just really throws everything uh, off so the boot sent away it is a low squibbing kick scooped up by the Redskins at the 31 yard line and that is immediately where they're stopped as Nate Metzger grabbed it and he's cut down immediately. So the Redskins will go to work with 7.23 to go here in this first quarter. Redskins offensive line looks like this. Ryan Price, Jacob Kirkpatrick, Grant Childress, Nate Schneider, and Tyler Hauser. The starting quarterback, Caleb Moyer, the coach's son, a 6'1", 175-pound freshman. Chase Nelson, Connor Maxtro will line up in the backfield. Wide receivers, Will Campbell, Jordan Schneider, and a tight end, Grant Hauser, as the Redskins will go to work. Moyer in a gun, and he'll hand off to Nows. Nows able to slip a tackle out to the 35-yard line before he's spun down and out of bounds as Dominic Pate makes the tackle for the Rams, but it's a gain of five on first down. I think Wapak's offense is one of the ones that, you know, as a coach, you look at games and you can say, well, they're a spread, or they're an eye, or they're whatever formation, and Wapak really is kind of that novelty. They line up in spread formations and the quarterback and the shotgun, but they're really a wing T team, yeah. and I think this is power football is uh, the type of team that's going to take to to, to beat Baden because not only because Baden can score, but then that way you can hold onto the ball and maybe keep your uh, defense off the field. Caleb Moyer hands off to Naus once again, looking for room, patiently moving to the 46 yard line as the Redskins look to pick up a Cook and Sun first down. Yeah, Jason Naus has had a great season. He's ran for over 1,300 yards and he scored 19 touchdowns. He's really the, the key piece in this offense. And I think, you know, one of these years, Caleb Moyer, they'll center everything around him, but still being a freshman, Jason Naus has just done a great job. And um, they'll have both those guys back next year, but you'll see uh, here on a big third down situation for them to maybe have to throw the ball. Third and five, they'll bring Naus back in the backfield as the freshman quarterback, Moyer, lines up in a gun. They'll send Will Campbell in motion. Rolling to the near side. Throw it to Nate Metzger, excuse me, was the man in motion. He's going to be just shy of the Cooking Sun first down. It's going to be fourth and very short. Yeah, and this is going to be a tough call for uh, Coach Moyer. I mean, you're, you got the win to punt, but, you know, how many opportunities will you have to, to score against Baden, you know, before it could potentially get out of hand? You don't want to give Baden a chance to get up, you know, early on you, but um, he's probably doing the smart thing here by punting it and trying to get good field position. Yeah, with the wind at their back, uh, Kyle Beach has a boot on him to begin with, but Baden just did go 80 yards on their first touchdown drive. So... We'll see if maybe there's a little fancy business on this punt. And there's not, they'll snap it back to Beach and he'll send it away, a booming kick inside the 10 yard line and it's gonna end up as a touchback, which when a high school punter is punting from his own 30 yard line, you're not expecting that thing to go 70 yards. <laughs> you know, it looked like he tried to put a boot on it and next time, you know, he's gonna have to realize that he's got a lot of help and so he doesn't have to put nearly as much on it to make it go as far. So at 5.09 to go here in this first quarter, Hamilton Baden will go back to work offensively. And one of the things I, I think that uh, Walpock's going to have to do is really this defensive line's going to have to get going here. There's some guys that I've, I've loved watching this year. One of them, Mikey Lee, he's a defensive end and uh, really been aggressive and active. I'd like to see him get going here as the WBL defensive lineman of the year. So keep an eye on him to see if he can get this Walpock defense going. So the Baton Rams go back to work. Ritzy in the gun. 
Carter Russo back in the ball game at running back. Three wide receivers split out wide. And they'll run it with Russo. And Russo spun down from behind. Yes. Mikey Lee and Jaden Rampula in on the stop for the or Caden Ware, excuse me, and Jaden Rampula on the stop. Yeah, Caden Ware is one of these guys that, you know, he's he's kind of tall, and I wouldn't say he's lanky. 190 pounds isn't lanky, but he's had a really nice season, 55 tackles and three sacks this year. And he's already made a couple nice plays uh, tonight. They're going to have to have his aggressiveness uh, on defense for sure. So second and 10 now for the Rams. So he'll hand off to Russo once again. Russo with some blockers. And it is open field. Brought down at the 34-yard line. Jordan Schneider, the tackle for Wampach, but that's a cook and son first down for the Rams. Yeah, Jordan Russo, or Carter Russo, excuse me, just very, very uh, good with his feet. Made a really nice cut. Uh, they, they had a kickout block down there on the, on the offensive line, and he just did a really nice job of cutting it up inside and getting really good uh, positive yards. So under four and a half to go on the least famous recipe scoreboard. Cook and Son first down for the Rams as them at the 33 yard line. Ritzy barks out orders to his offensive line. Two wide receivers split out wide to each side and a handoff. And he's brought down from behind. Another big play from that backside defensive end. And Caden Ware's got another tackle. Well, the scheme right now, they're letting Caden Ware just play. And he's coming down and he's crashing down. and. He's making plays all over the place. I think the thing you have to be leery of is the quarterback pulling the football. And obviously these Baden coaches know that as well. And I'm sure Coach Nick Truesdale schemed up something defensively to, to make sure that he's got, if he's got a defensive end crashing, maybe a linebacker coming over the top to spy the quarterback. So second and 10 once again for the Rams. Ritzy in the gun looking for more. Nearly intercepted, nearly intercepted. Grant Jolly almost got his mitts on it, but a, a bit too high. And I'm sure Grant Jolly, as you saw his reaction there, if he could replay that one, he would probably take the opportunity. Man, that was that was a, a play where I think Wapak, you know, they'd love to have that one back. It looked like Ritzy was looking for number three, Austin Buckle, on a curl route. And that ball just got up into the, the jet stream there, Garrett, and took off. And man, if, uh, you know, Grant Jolly could have been just maybe another yard or two back, he would have had a pick. So a big third down here for the Redskin defense. You know, Baden looking to throw a screen and a big stick there by the Wapak defense. My goodness gracious, Connor Mextro laying the boom stick and it's going to be fourth and long for the Rams. Well, he read that completely from the get go and they ran that jet, or I guess it's not really a jet screen, but kind of like a tunnel screen underneath. Uh, with Braden Moore and Connor Mextra just waited on it. You could just see his eyes. He just waited, waited, waited. He timed it up perfectly and made a nice huge hit and made a nice uh, pick me up for Walpock. So the Rams will shift momentarily from that punt unit. As Walpock gets a big defensive stand there after the punt on fourth and one. Ball hangs in the air and it's fumbled, muffed at the 40 yard line. Wapak believes they have it, and by the somewhat lackadaisical response from the <laughs> officials, I, I assume they think that the Redskins have it, and they do as well. We'll step aside, 3.16 to go. Redskin football when we come back here on WOSN. Out of the timeout, 3.16 to go here in the first quarter. Wapak will go straight. Back up under center on first down. And they'll hand off to Connor Extra out to the 41 yard line. So a gain of one there on the first down carry where we didn't see Wapak go under center the last time they had the football, John. But that time, uh, getting back maybe to more basics or maybe a little bit on offense, maybe they're more comfortable with uh, in, in these elements. Yeah, I mean, and that's a good idea to, to maybe go a little bit more traditional and uh, try to run it up in there. I like I like Connor Mextra running the ball. I mean, he's not one that, you know, they're typically going to look for Jason House, but uh, Mextra's got five, over 500 yards rushing this year, so I think it's a good idea to try to match power with power. So second and nine here with 2.30 to go in the first quarter. They'll hand off to Nows. Nows with a bevy of blockers on the outside. Got just shy of the 45-yard line. Rolled up on Grant Jolly, but looks like he's all right. And a gain of three or four yards there on second down. We'll bring up third and five here for Wampak. That's what I, I always like what Coach Moyer does offensively. He likes to trade and shift a lot, especially yeah. with his tight ends and wingbacks. 
and typically that's so that he gets uh, an alignment from the defense or maybe a certain defender on one side of the ball and then they can shift and move over to the other side of the ball. They do that very well and you can see them shift to the short side of the field and pick up a really good uh, amount of yards there. On the flip side of that as well, you got a freshman quarterback that makes the defense tip their hand of whether they're playing man or zone if you want to throw the football, which they do here on third and five. Caleb Boyer is going to try to scamper for the first down. He's got it and more in the Baden territory for the first time. Shoved out of bounds inside the 45-yard line. And freshman quarterback Caleb Moyer picks up the cooking sun first down. Yeah, Moyer did a really nice job. He actually had a receiver. Looked like Jordan Snyder came open. Uh, at, the, at the top of the field, but he was under some pressure and he did a, a, a nice job of just tucking it and running it. And that was, I believe, one of the, the biggest gains of the night, you know, kind of um, playing this uh, Baden defense. It hadn't been easy, and, and that was a big pickup for the Redskins. So that's a nice cooking sun first down there for the Redskins to continue the drive with 1.51 to go here in this first quarter on the least famous recipe scoreboard. They'll trade a formation once again to the Left side is Moyer, hands off to Nouse. Nouse patient and fortunately swallowed up by the Hamilton Baden defense. Yeah, Baden, they, they read that well. And as soon as they shifted, they shifted as well. And, and they've probably seen that on film and uh, seeing uh, that shift there. And now Walpock's in a situation where they don't really want to beat Garrett. They're now in second and long. And they're gonna, at some point, they're going to have to throw the ball a little bit. And, uh, they're not typically a passing team. Second and 12, Moyer in the shotgun will throw to the far side to Jordan Schneider, caught at the 41 yard line. Cut down at the 40. So a gain of five there, a gain of six for Wapak. An easy pitch and catch to get some of those yards back. Well, Caleb Moyer showed his arm strength there. I mean, he he laid it out there for Schneider. That's not an easy throw on an, in an out route. It looks like a short pass, but it's so far width-wise that it's a really a difficult throw to make. And, Moyer zipped it in there for a really good gain on second down. So third and seven upcoming here, and now you're into the 40-yard line, kind of in no man's land. It, it, this is four down territory, is it not? Yeah, down seven, nothing, playoffs, Baden, you're going for it. Caleb Moyer will send Grant Jolly in motion. He'll shuffle along the formation, and Moyer will hang in a pocket. Now has to avoid that Baden defense, and he'll be brought down at the original line of scrimmage. A loss of about three there on third down. And now that might change the decision making here for the Redskins. Yeah, Caden Starks, the linebacker, came on a delayed blitz and, uh, you know, he really kind of blew up that play and really put Walpog now in a position where, you know, fourth and, and, and long, it's uh, it looked like the field position worked the last time. So it looks like Coach Moore is going to stick with that plan this time. So we'll see the punt this time from Kyle Beach. Doesn't have to put nearly as much on it as the last one went about 70 yards. They'll try to pin Hamilton Baden back deep. The old lob shot punt from Beach pounces inside the 10 yard line, bounces at the five yard line, and it's going to be downed by the Redskins. That's a fantastic punch, punt by Beach. So with 23 seconds to go into first quarter, we'll step aside. We'll have the conclusion of this quarter coming up here on WOSN. First down tonight brought to you by Cook and Son Plumbing and Heating, specializing in old time service since 1978. You can find them on Facebook or call 419 738 8956. So, first and 10 here for Hamilton Baden, their third drive of the night. Got a touchdown on the first one, and the Redskins forced him three and out the last time as Ritzy will line up in a gun. And off to the running back, Russo runs straight ahead to the nine yard line before he's brought down a gain of, or, well, they'll cut him down at the eight yard line actually. So a gain of just about three there on first down. And you know, if you're a Walpock, you really gotta, you gotta like where you're at. I know you haven't got anything going offensively, but only giving up a score and being down 7-0 with great field position going into the second quarter is a, is a good start. So that'll do it for the first quarter of action. Hamilton Baden leads Wapak 7-0. And we'll step aside and come back with second quarter action here on WOSN. Tonight's Red Zone sponsor is Matt's Heating and Cooling. Is your home in the energy efficient zone? Call Matt's Heating and Cooling or go to callmattsheating.com to schedule your free estimate. Today, second quarter about to get underway here in this Division Three regional semifinal between Wapak and Hamilton Baden. I'm Garrett Seawright, joined alongside John Zerby. We're bringing you all the action from high atop the press box here at Trotwood Madison High School. 
as the Rams will line up in a Wildcat. Braden Moore will take the direct snap, roll to his right, and sprints to the 15-yard line before he's shoved backwards. So Baden finding creative ways to get the ball in their playmakers' hands. Yeah, and Braden Moore's got three rushing TDs this season, so they, they typically will try to do that to get him the ball. And obviously, as a receiver, you're only catching the ball, you know, a quarter of the time, or and, and you they want to get him touches. So a creative way to get him the ball and get some, uh, some uh, good yardage. So third and very short here for the Rams. Wapak trying to force the punt. They'll hand off. Carter Russo the carry. Scampers to the near side of the 25-yard line. He's got the cooking sun first down and more. And Russo will move the chains. Well, what Russo does is he makes something out of nothing. And uh, Walpock had that play well defended, but he broke a tackle there, Russo, and was able to bump that for another nice gain. And it keeps this uh, drive alive for uh, Baden. So that cooking sun first down. Moves those chains, and like you said, John, that just moves the chains and keeps that clock moving. 11.15 to go here in this quarter. Ritzy in a gun once again. We'll hand off to Russo. Russo's got room to run and more. Slips past to tackle out to the 45-yard line before the stop is made by Grand Jolly. But it's another cooking sun first down there for Carter Russo. Yeah, Carter Russo broke that one. and. He's just shifty. I mean, he goes side to side as good as he goes north and south. And if it wasn't for Grand Jolly coming up and making a really nice form tackle, he could have went to the house there. So that brings up another, you know, good first down for Baden. And now they are on the move. Ball to 45-yard line after being pinned back at their own five-yard line. Ritzy in the gun. A wing back lined up to the left side. Behind a tight end for Baden. And they'll hand off to Ritzy one more time. Or excuse me, Yordy. Yordy the carry that time. And he's very close to a cooking sun first down. Has Hamilton Baden winning the line of scrimmage right now, John? Yeah, they're they're really pushing that Wapak front four around. Um, you know, some of these guys are gonna have to uh, start to get some penetration in the backfield and start to, to you know, get some, uh, shore up those creases, because right now there's a lot of room to run. Rams are into Redskin territory at the 49-yard line. It's Ritzy joining the backfield by Yordy. Offset to his left. Ten minutes remaining in the second quarter here on the least famous recipe scoreboard. As Ritzy will turn and fire, and the ball's caught up the far sideline, shoved out of bounds. As Carson Cheek has the catch. That's complete. Yeah, that, you know, they, they have not... Um, you know, really try to throw the ball downfield much besides uh, trying to uh, target Braden Moore, but that was just a really nice hook route. And the Wapak defender went to make a tackle and missed, and he made a nice play. And you know, that, that's the kind of stuff that Wapak's going to have to shore up. They got to make tackles in the open field. They got to get their defensive line making a push. Um, Baden is really on the move right now. Rams with the carry. Russo straight up the middle once again into a wall of Redskin defenders. Gain of just a couple there on first down. Yeah, that's a really nice, nice job by the defensive line by Walpock. And I love watching Mikey Lee. I said it earlier in the in the game. I, I love watching him play, not only because his hair is flying around all over the place, but he's just so aggressive. And you know, even on that play there, it was a power play, and he kind of followed the guard right down the line of scrimmage and was able to make, uh, make a nice tackle. So second and eight here for Baden. He's marching towards the match, hitting a cooling red zone. It's Russo in the backfield with Ritzy once again. 9.15 to go here in the second quarter. So Wapak defense will shift on second and eight. Rams hand off to Russo once again, right into the waiting arms of Caden Ware. And Joey Truesdale helps on the stop as well. Not a whole lot of room there for the Rams to run. Yeah, kind of interesting. Baton, they're running a play, they get set, and then they stop and look over at their coach and make a shift. And it's kind of funny because Walpox, all the Walpox defensive line looked over at Hamilton Baton's coach as well as he's making that call, and then they all shifted. So they must have seen something on film that uh, you know identifies when that shift happens that they're gonna they're gonna attack it this way. Another big third and six here for the Walpox defense. They'll send a man in motion, pitch it ahead, buckle with the. Reception and Buckle is off the races, and Buckle is gone. Is that Carson Cheek? 
nonetheless, it's a 31-yard touchdown for Carson Cheek. And make it 13-0. Rams on the Lee's Famous Recipe scoreboard after that Allen Davis insurance touchdown. Well, Cheek did a nice job of, you know, that's a jet sweep, but it was a toss, so it was really a pass play. It'll count in the statistical book as a touchdown pass, but what I saw was that he cut it up inside and had some really great blocking, was able to get into that secondary, and once he got into the secondary, here was no one catching him. 31 yards out, and now, Wapak, or excuse me, Hamilton Baden will try out for the Pinkley Real Estate extra point. Snap is through the wickets, and the PAT kicker will just fall on the ball at the 20-yard line, so the score remains 13-0. Hamilton Baden leads over Wapak here on WOSN. Touchdowns tonight brought to you by Allen Davis Insurance, your solutions provider specializing in auto, home, business insurance, and more as the Wampak Redskins would love to put an Allen Davis Insurance touchdown on the board as they trail 13 to nothing against the top seeded Hamilton Baden Rams here on the least famous recipe scoreboard. And, uh, nothing really too fancy there, John, from the from the Rams, just, uh, just basically telling Wampak, hey, if you can stop us, go ahead and try. And they were able to put, put another touchdown on the board. Yeah, just a lot of short runs and a hook route and not, not much there other than just fundamentals. Ball on the return caught by Jace Nellis out to the 29-yard line. So nice return here. He got a little steam coming up the field to catch the football and got it just shy of the 30-yard line. So that is where Wapak will start their third drive of the night here after a pair of punts on their first two drives. And I don't think you're in panic mode yet. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, it's it's... It, it's playoff football, so it is different than the regular season. And when you're playing a number one team like Hamilton Baden, things are different. But I don't think you panic at this point. I, I think Coach Moyer's been here enough in his career. He knows that he's going to continue to do the things that they do. But Walpock's just got to get a drive going here to get back into this game. Caleb Moyer will hand off to Jace Nelson. He's cut down right at the line of scrimmage. If he got back to the line of scrimmage, tackle made by the Rams in the backfield will bring up second and long here for Walpock. Yeah, you, you know, when you when you look at this game and you read about Hamilton Baden, and obviously we don't watch them very often uh, being in the area that we are, but uh, you hear so much about offense, but I just, I watched them once last year and I remember defensively they were just so good and you're seeing that now. Walpock's having a real tough time getting any positive yardage. Yeah, statistically the best defense in Division Three, giving up just under, or just over eight points a night. As the Redskins will turn and pitch to now to the short side of the field. Or excuse me, Mextro gets the carry out to about the 35-yard line. So a gain of uh, six there for Mextro on a carry. will make it third and eat a little bit more manageable. Yeah, and I, I like I said earlier, I think that they need to they need to get the ball to Connor Mextro, especially with you know right now. The biggest difference I see is that Hamilton Baden, they've got the size and the strength, but they're they are faster than Walpock. They got the speed and they can really close those gaps. So Walpock may need to look for a little bit more power football here to try to equal this up. So third and six for the Redskins, looking to pick up their first Cook and Sun first down, or second first, second Cook and Sun first down, I should say. It's Jolly, the man in motion. Moyer back to pass. He'll turn, fire down the middle of the field, looking for Hauser. And finally, the penalty flag comes in. As Hauser got hit about a second and a half before the ball got there. And I don't know if the, you know, the rest hands are as cold as ours are up here, but uh, had to find where the flag was. But that's about as obvious as a pass interference as you'll find. Well, there was like that moment in time. I felt like, you know, you saw your life flash in front of you and like, oh, they are going like, to throw the right. flag. You know, you're, like. you're not going to throw that. <laughs> so the Cook and Son first down comes via the penalty as Tyler Hauser running down the middle of the field by himself until he gets molly whopped from behind behind and that'll move the chains and get the Redskins very close to Ram territory here. Well I think what happened was and I don't you know want to make so much of the win but I think you know the ball just yeah. got hung up in the wind and he just was waiting on it and you know the defender just hit him early because he thought the ball would be there sooner. Redskins trying to get Hamilton Baden to jump off sides there. Didn't get it as Moyer will go back under center with under seven minutes to go. He'll turn and hand off to Dallas. Now will try to turn that corner. Is able to stretch it out to the sideline into Baden territory at the 48-yard line. So from 148 to the other, Wapak now in Ram territory. And that's the first time I've seen them in an, in an unbalanced under center formation. They ran uh, tight end wing, 
to the wide side of the field and then brought their split end over. Um, and they had the numbers. You can see now is finally able to get to the flank and get to the edge and really a good first down pickup. So second and six upcoming here for the Redskins. Looking for another Cook and Son first down from the 48-yard line. Moyer in the gun once again. Nows to his left. They'll send Nows in motion, and Moyer will keep it himself off left tackle. The quarterback keeper's got the Cook and Son first down. Second first down scamper there from the freshman quarterback, Caleb Moyer. Gets Wapak deeper into Ram territory. Yeah, and you know, we haven't really seen Moyer run the ball on a design run. We've seen him scramble and pick up yards, but um, that's something there that's a positive pickup with Nows uh, motioning out of the backfield there. That opened up a really nice uh, gap for Moyer to run through and a much needed first down for Walpock. So the ball 39 yard line, six and a half to go here in the first half on the Lay's Famous Recipe scoreboard. Redskins trailing 13 nothing as Moyer will come back out the gun. They'll send Jace Naus to the slot, or will wing back at the top of your screen and now send Mextro to the other wing position. They'll send Naus in motion, fake the handoff to him and Moyer's got a convoy of blockers out of the open field. Caleb Moyer's got the cook and stunt first down and more as he'll be very close to the Matt's heating and cooling red zone, if not inside the Matt's heating and cooling red zone. Very creative, shifting, trading, and then the counter action. It looked like it was uh, going to be a, a wide sweep to Jason Naus when he went in motion, but they actually pulled a guard and then brought Mextro on the backside to lead Caleb Moyer on the backside counter. And boy, Moyer, he looks good. You know, we talk at you know at this point of the year. I know he's a freshman, but he's played enough games. He's he's really like a sophomore at this point. And, Man, he looks good. He is uh, something to be excited for in the future. He's got 13, 12 varsity games under his belt. Number 13 here tonight as a Metzger Financial Services timeout called by Travis Moyer and the Redskins. We'll step aside as well. 6.09 to go in the second quarter. Redskins trail the driving here on WOSN. Timeouts tonight brought to you by Metzger Financial Services, helping you plan your financial future. Visit MetzgerFinancialServices.com. Redskins driving, 6.09 to go here in the second quarter. Ball to 20-yard line, so they are inside. The Mats heating and cooling red zone. They'll hand off to Jason Naus. Naus powers ahead to the 15-yard line for another carry. And now you got this nice dynamic of they've got to honor Caleb Moyer. He's had yeah. a couple nice pickups. and. Uh, that's the first time Jason House has really had some open room to run. Second so second and six up coming here for Wapak. As the clock continues to tick, looking to punch in there first. Allen Davis insurance touchdown. Ball to 16 yard line. Wind now in their face. As now shifts to the left of Moyer. They'll send Jolly in motion. And Moyer will look for Jolly. Nearly intercepted. Is it picked off? It is. Yeah, I think they're going to give that to him. Carson Sheik, the interception for the Baden Rams. A costly mistake there by Wapak. That's a tough break for, for Wapak and especially Caleb Moyer because uh, it's a two-man route, one man in, one man out, and the inside man was not open. The thing was is that, um, you know, when he looks back on the film later, he's going to see that he had a lot of grass he could have ran. He probably could have picked up uh, – been close to the end zone, but chose to try to whip it in there, and Baden made a really nice job of stepping in front of the receiver and making a huge momentum uh, breaker for the for Walpock. And Baden has done a nice job in the turnover battle. They're plus 18 in the turnover margin, and they tally another one here. So first and 10 for the Rams inside their own 10-yard line. As they'll hand off to Russo. Russo bounces it outside. Russo still churning those legs down. At the 16-yard line, gain of six on first down for Carter Russo. And Baden, they're just wearing on you. I mean, they yeah. just, they, they do, they come at you. Um, they've got a really nice scheme, you know. They've run a ton of plays tonight, but honestly, they, they haven't really called many different plays. It's been very similar stuff, and uh, they're not doing anything to trick Walpock. They're just coming at him. And I'm sure, you know, Hamilton Baden, they've got a Division One wide receiver. They didn't come in here tonight and say, we don't want to use that guy, but the game plan dictates, hey, what we're faced with here is Russo gets another cook and son first down is we're going to have to run the football tonight. And, and you saw them put, you know, Braden Moore in his shotgun and have him take the snap himself. But, you know, really maybe fortunately for Wapak, the, the elements have been a limit to, to Braden Moore as well. Yeah, because, 
if you throw him in the mix, you know, Walpock really, I mean, like I said earlier, they didn't, weren't really double covering him. They are really putting like a guy and a half on him, but they haven't really targeted him. And especially with the win the way it is, that they're going to have to have an effective running game. So if you're Walpock, you got to feel good about that, but you got to stop this running game too. 420 to go here in the first half. First and 10 for the Rams. They're on 23 yard line. Ritzy going to keep it himself. Has room to run at the 30 to the 35. He's got the Cook and Son first down before the stop is made by Wapox, number 13, Jeffrey Kohler. Sooner or later, you knew that was going to happen. I mean, they've just ran that play enough, enough, enough. And, and finally, uh, you know, they were able to, you know, Mikey Lee's coming, he's crashing down. They just need a linebacker to come over and scrape over the top and replace that gap. And, and uh, Ritzy did a really nice job of just uh, not allowing that to happen. So under four minutes to go here in this first half on the Lee Samus recipe scoreboard. And off to Russo. Russo spun down, ball nearly ripped out by the Redskins as Caden, or excuse me, Tyler Hauser and Connor Mextro combined for the stop there. I always like watching Connor Mextro, you know. In a game like this, it's, you know, you, you want to watch the ball, but sometimes it's fun to just watch kids play, and, and it's fun to watch him play linebacker because he is just the field general out there, and the way he moves side to side, as big as he is, he's a really, he's an excellent player. He doesn't mind thumping either. He didn't mind uh, hitting people <laughs> as the ball thrown and caught. Stiff arm made by Dominic Pate on the catch, and that's a cooking son first down for the Rams. Yeah, and you know, I, I, I always hear that, you know, you can teach kids to be aggressive, and I think you can get kids to be more aggressive, but I don't think you can teach kids to just be aggressive, you know, and Connor Mextra, no one taught him that. He's no. just aggressive, and uh, he's just a really, really fun player to watch. You know, so like when you're playing youth football, like, why do you want to, I want to spend time with my friends, I want to hit people. <laughs> yeah. And that pays dividends on Friday nights, is Ritzy in the shotgun, looking to fire, does bat it down, nearly intercepted by the Redskins. As Caden Ware got his mitts on it, nearly hauled it in. That would have been a heck of a play there by the defensive lineman. You know, I've seen Caden Ware play earlier in the season. He did the same thing. He does a really excellent job in his pass rush to not only just, you know, he's trying to get uh, a sack, which all defensive linemen are, but he's smart enough to also know that if he uses uh, leverage and he uses his ability to jump and to read the quarterback size, he can make a big play, and he did right there by batting that ball down. Second and 10, Ritzy will be in a gun by himself with 3.13 to go, leading 13-0. After a couple of Cook and Son first downs, they're keeping the ball moving as Braden Moore gets the jet sweep. Moore, penalty flag thrown as Moore's brought down. I believe a block in the back was made on Wampox Joey Truesdale, and that'll push Baden, those, those blocking the backs and those holding calls are just drive killers in high school football. Yeah, and Joey Truesdale, everybody in the stands could see it. I mean, he was, his hands were up, he's trying to make the play, and he's just getting, you know, drilled in the back. But the reason why he got hit in the back is because as soon as that motion happened, he reacted to it quickly, and the blocker couldn't get there. So Joey Truesdale, uh, because he was aware of what was going on, he was able to get that penalty for, uh, against Baden. So now make it second and 20 for the Rams, and that's a, that's a big play there for, for the Redskin D to, it would have been, you know, third and eight-ish, but second and 20 sure feels like a, a little a little better odds of stopping Baden here in this first half is they, they probably averaged six and a half, seven yards a carry here when they've ran a football. So they'll do the same play again. Braden Moore looking to throw this time, and he spun down Jaden Rampula. Brings down Brandon Braden Moore inside the 30-yard line. The Rams go even further backwards. And we just talked about it a few plays ago, how the defensive line from Walpock is going to have to step up. And let me tell you something. This drive they had, they are getting after it. And uh, Jaden Rampula, man, what a great play. They put more in motion. They gave him the ball. They're going to have to, uh, they were going to try to run a, a, like a halfback or I guess a wide receiver pass. Uh, and they just sniffed that out and did a great job. So third and 31. Rams basically got to get to the Indiana border from here. With two minutes to go here in the first half. And they'll just run the football up ahead. Russo brought down from behind. Mikey Lee on the tackle. Timeout called by Wapak, a Metzger Financial Services timeout. And we'll step aside as well. 150 to go here in this first half. Redskins trail 13-0 on WOSN.
Tonight's timeouts brought to you by Metzger Financial Services, helping you plan your financial future. Visit MetzgerFinancialServices.com. So Wapak forcing a baden punt after a disastrous drive for the guys in green. And they don't get off a great one as it bounces at the 24-yard line and goes out of play. So compared to the punt from Kyle Beach earlier and <laughs> roughly the same spot, you can really showcase the leg there from the Wapak punter compared to the Ram one. Yeah, and you know, I guess you look at the, the, the wind, the way it's blowing, it's actually blowing right into the, the away stand. So the wind kind of got a hold of that and brought it sideways. And it could have been a lot worse for Wapak if it would have hit the ground. It looks like the officials have actually given them pretty good field cut, uh, field position. I oh, kinda thought oh it, my goodness. I kind of thought it went out way. Yeah, about the 30, uh, more yeah. than the 20. Yeah, so they got it. I just looked up. But <laughs> that's, yeah, that's a, that's a bit of a. Bit of a difference. So the Ram, or the Redskins with 142 to go. Moyer in the shotgun will send Jolly in motion. He'll hand off to Jace now. So he'll power into the 21 yard line. Met in the backfield, but getting a one yard carry there is a win for the Redskins. Just this Baden defensive line, Patrick Ray inside. I'm telling you, he is just making noise. Number 78. He's a six foot six, 230 pound senior and he is just I mean he's hard to move and some of these these other guys here uh, just doing a great job 44 Jackson Martin has been a force um, has made a, a lot of big plays and you can see that uh, you know like we talked earlier their their defense has been one of the best defenses in the division three second and nine they'll hand off to Nouse on a counter Nouse with room to run he's got the cooking stone first down and more out to the 35 yard line he Redskin faithful don't believe he was down he's Punched down well after the play. He kept on a chugging. He wants to take a look and see if we can't get an Alice Woody's Diner replay there to see if Jace Nouse was down or not. Well, I mean, we're about as far away. <laughs> we're about I was as far say, away as you, you know, can be. Beyond yeah. the wind and everything else going on, I didn't hear a whistle. I mean, I think he just. I did. Okay. And I, 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 I from, you know, uh, a million miles away up here, I thought he was down, but okay. he sure sold it like, yep. he, like he wasn't, so. Yeah, I couldn't get a great I thought he was down, too, yeah, but I didn't hear the whistle, so I'm glad you, you must have much better ears than me, Garrett. <laughs> now it's the carry. Now it's the same play. Barrels through a defender, tripped up on the legs of the defender, but another Cook and Son first down for Chase Nows. He's running with a purpose. One guy. I mean, one guy to beat, and he's uh, that's a big touchdown for Walpock, but he gets tripped up here, and they got to move with only 33 seconds to go. They got to move here. And the wind blowing in their face. Kyle Beach had a 51 yard field goal last week, but going into the wind now is now brought down right at the line of scrimmage with 26 seconds to go. And the Redskins have called a Metzger Financial Services timeout. So we'll step aside as well. 22 seconds remain and a half. Redskins trying to put an Allen Davis insurance touchdown on the board. We'll see if they can do it when we come back on WOSN. Time out. First down tonight brought to you by Cook and Son Plumbing and Heating, specializing in old time service since 1978. Find them on Facebook or call 419-738-8956. Redskins putting together a couple of Cook and Son first downs on this drive, but now without a timeout with 22 seconds to go, not a whole lot of options here for the Redskins. No, and they're gonna have to throw the ball deep to get the in, in the red zone, and that's not their forte. Moyer in the gun, pressured, will throw the screen to Mextro. Mextro with blockers out to the 35-yard line. Got the Cook and Son first down and more at the 30. Redskins will move quickly to the line to try to spike it, but a big chunk yardage play once again, capitalizing on the aggressiveness of that Ram D. Perfect call by Coach Moyer. So they'll spike the football with nine seconds to go. Now, again, we mentioned earlier, Kyle Beach hit a school record 51 yards, but a field goal last week, but um, he'd have to kick it about a 51-yard field goal to make a 25-yard field yeah, goal tonight. This right now, it's, you're just not in that situation. I mean, I, I don't think even an extra point is not given uh, oh, with this win, you know. Um, but, uh, you know, what a great call by Coach Moyer. I love the screen call. They, 
Baden's bringing pressure. I mean, they're bringing guys off the edge, and they're really uh, starting to pick up the pressure, and a screen underneath the Mextro was a perfect call. I think that's something they should come back to in the second half because I think it could be effective. So nine seconds to go. Moyer in the gun. Nine seconds in the first half, I should say. It's Jolly, the man in motion. Moyer rolls that side, turns, fires, caught by Schneider. He's very close to the Cook and Sun first down, very close to the Matt's heating and cooling red zone as well. What a great play by Schneider. I mean, he got caught the ball. He had enough awareness that I even think he looked up at the clock and made sure that he was going to get out of bounds and knew uh, well enough to get out there. And Garrett, look what we got here. So we'll see if Kyle Beach can boot one. It's going to be a 34-yard field goal. No, a 38-yard field goal. Yeah. With the wind blowing right in his face. With three seconds in the half, we'll see if he can nail it. Snap his back, the hold is down, the kick is up. Does the kick have enough? It does. Wow. Kyle Beach powers a field goal through the uprights and good to end the first half of play. He needed 38 yards, might have got 38 and a half on it. Didn't matter, it got past the crossbar. And the Redskins get a point. Three points on the board to end the first half of play. So 13-3 on the Leafs Famous Recipe scoreboard. We'll step aside, come back and recap the first half of play when we return here on WOSN. Back here at the halftime break, Wapak trailing Hamilton Baton 13-3. The Redskins getting that. 38-yard field goal on the board there from Kyle Beach. And John uh, Beach set the school record last week with a 51-yard field goal. I, that one should be the school record. That, that one had more leg on it than the 51-yarder, I think. Well, I think you said it right. I think if he needed 38 yards, he had 38 and a half yards. But directly into the wind, I, he, I don't know how long that would have went with no wind, but he put a boo behind it. And I, I was, I, I apologize to him now because I didn't think that would happen. No. And what a great kick. No, and they, when they sent the field goal unit, and not to second guess Travis Moyer, you know, he won his 200th game at Wapak last week in nine years. Uh, but when they sent the field goal unit out, I thought, what are you doing? <laughs> Have you not been outside the last hour and a half like the rest of us? And it worked. So it's 13 to 3 here at the halftime break and on the least famous recipe scoreboard. And John, when you take a look at the, the keys of the game that we came into, does anything change here in the second half for those Lima Chevrolet Cadillac keys to the game? Well, I think the big thing is that, uh, you know, they. Late in the second quarter, Walpock did have that turnover. I think it would really hurt them. That would put them, you know, right now within a three-point game, mm -hmm. you know, if, if if they were able to convert. Because they were moving the ball and in, and in the red zone, and I think that's the big thing. But, you know, they talked about winning the line of scrimmage. And I think right now, it's it's uh, although it's just a ten-point game, it's been very easily Hamilton Baden has won the line of scrimmage. And I think that's just one of the things that Walpock's going to have to I don't think it's really an adjustment, you know, scheme-wise. I just think it's something that they're just going to have to turn up the volume a little bit on their play and, and then match that aggressiveness that Baden's been bringing. So those are were our Lima Chevrolet Cadillac keys to the game. And they're brought to you by Lima Chevrolet Cadillac, the area's premier Chevrolet and Cadillac dealer, serving Lima for over 100 years. They're proud to call this home. We'll step aside and come back with third quarter action in this Division Three regional semifinal between Wapak and Baden, you're on WOSN. Touchdowns tonight are brought to you by Allen Davis Insurance, your solutions provider specializing in auto, home, business insurance, and more. Redskins looking for their first Allen Davis Insurance touchdown of the night. And they'll get the football to begin the second half here. Garrett C. Ryan and John Zerby high atop the stadium here at Trotwood Madison High School. Yes, Hamilton Baden will go to kick it away to the Wapak Redskins. It's a high end over end kick with the wind at their back. Caught by Jace Nels inside the five yard line. He'll bring to the near sideline. Nels with some room to run out to the 25 yard line, just shy of the 30 yard line. Or Grant Jolly, excuse me, with the return. Jolly, the sophomore, been uh, a nice playmaker at times throughout the season for the Redskins. Yeah, I got to watch Jolly earlier in the season, and, you know, he's really been a target for them offensively. He's a really nice wide receiver. He's got 24 catches this year for 317 yards, but um, really haven't had uh, the opportunity to get him the ball tonight. I think that might have been the first time he's touched the ball, and it gives the Redskins a decent field position to start. 
And right at their own 29-yard line, the Redskins will go to work. Split T backfield behind freshman quarterback Caleb Moyer under center. And he'll turn around and hand off to Jason Nelson immediately dodging defenders. And he's brought down for a loss to begin the first drive. Yeah, Caden Starks, middle linebacker for Hamilton Baton. He's just been everywhere tonight. He's flying all over the place. And, uh, you know, he just really read that one as well. And so, uh, you know, we talked about it at halftime. They're going to have the offensive line's going to have to match this defensive line pressure. So not the ideal start here in this third quarter for the Wapak Redskins. As they'll trot the offense back out. Split T backfield once again behind Moyer in the unbalanced line. Charlie in motion. Now turn and hand off to Naus. Naus patiently parsing through that Baden defense, making defenders miss out to the 30-yard line. So a gain of two there on second down. Bring well, up third and long, John. Yeah, and you, you see the athletic ability of uh, Anaus. You know, he's he's getting that play strung out, and Nate Ostendorf did a nice job from Hamilton Baden of really stringing that thing out. But Naus did a really good job of just being patient and finally getting yards because that really could have been ugly and turned into a loss. So third and eight for the Redskin D throwing into the wind if they do decide to put the football in the air. Moyer will look to throw. Stands in the pocket, now steps up, has to reverse field, and is pressured once again, and he slammed to the turf. And he lost the football. Yeah, immediately, you know, when he started scrambling, it, it didn't look good, because he had receivers running way downfield, and, you know, when you start to scramble, it's one thing to go forward and scramble, but then when you go forward and then backward, it's bad news, and uh, that, that, is a, that is a big turnover for Hamilton Baden, especially this kind of field position right here. Now they start at their own 16-yard line after the turnover, a second of the Reds of the night against the Redskins. So first and 10 for the Rams at their own six, or at the Wapak 16-yard line, excuse me, early here in this third quarter. Ritzy will be in a gun with Carter Russo. Russo, the carry, off tackle to the left side. Russo inside the five-yard line, collides with a wet Redskin defender and shoved out inside the five-yard line. So deeper into that Matt's heating and cooling red zone are the Rams. Yeah, and they've been in this situation a lot this year where they've had some tight games and they've come out from halftime and uh, really uh, buckled down. I know when they played Frank, uh, St. Francis de Sales earlier in the season, uh, this is a similar situation. They were uh, with a little bit of a lead at halftime and they came out and kind of put it to the sales. So, you know, this is uh, this is kind of what Hamilton Baden does as they come out and play a great second half. Russo, the carry. Russo looking to get inside the end zone. Didn't get there. Stood up by that Redskin D. No gain on the play. We'll bring up second and goal from the three. Well, and Walpock's just going to have to tighten up. I mean, they're going to have to. You know, we kind of talked at halftime off the air, uh, Garrett, that, you know, you're in these situations now where you're going to have to do some things that you're not customarily used to doing when you're this deep in the playoffs. And, you know, Walpock's defense, they haven't had to hang their hat on their defense this year, but they might have to here in the second half. Russo, the carry, scampering out, cut down once again. Another nice stop. Jordan Schneider on the tackle there, or excuse me, Nate Metzger on the stop for Wapak will bring up third in goal as the Redskins looking to avoid giving up another Allen Davis insurance touchdown. Yeah, just what I just said, Nate Metzger did that right there. He did a great job of stepping up and, and keeping them out of the end zone and uh, giving, uh, putting Baden in a really a, a weird situation now that they got third down here because, you know, you got the wind to your back, but, uh, you know, you're, you're also not up by very many points, so you, you see a really uh, interesting uh, formation here by Baden. We'll see what the penalty flag is. Dead ball, encroachment, defense. Uh, so really, it, it, the, it moves to the one and a half yard, it'll move to the one yard line essentially. So third and goal from the one rather than third and goal to two. If you ever want to have a penalty, Garrett, that's the one because they only got about it, like you said, like a half foot, you know, for that penalty. So Ritzy in a gun, Russo behind him. Ball snapped between the wickets of Ritzy. It's loose. He pounces on it at the 16 yard line back at the Original line of scrimmage where this drive started, and that's a great play there for the Wapak defense to push that back. Well, the Wapak defense answers, and they just came up big. I mean, you know, you had that turnover, and you really put them in a bad spot by, by being so deep in the red zone, and the Wapak defense, especially that defensive line, did a great job of stepping up and making a huge stop. 
So the Rams will trot their field goal unit out. They were six of nine from field goal, four field goals this season. As Nick Warner will kick it away, and he's got the wind at his back, and it's up and good. So 16 to three now the score on the least famous recipe scoreboard. We'll step aside, Baton with the lead here in the third quarter on WOSN. Our scoreboard tonight provided by Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Wapak and Delphus. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken. Home style happens here. 16-3 on the Lee's Famous Recipe scoreboard as the Baden Rams get a field goal on the board from Nick Warner. Extending that lead and really that's about best case scenario for the Wapak Redskins here as they Return the football out to the 35-yard line. Still churning ahead to the 40-yard line before the returner is slung down to the turf at the 43-yard line. Is Nate Metzger another return there for the Redskins? But, uh, John, as I was mentioning, that's about best-case scenario, isn't it, after turning the football over to the 16-yard line, only give up three points? Oh, absolutely. And then not only you know giving the ball up on a turnover, but then having a penalty and having the, the ball really on the, about the one-foot line. Uh, defense for Walpock did a great job of stepping up and making that stop. So the Redskins will get to work at their own 43-yard line with 8.17 to go here in the third quarter. Caleb Boyer will send Grant Jolly in motion. And hand off to Jace now. He'll run right into the heart of that Baden defense, trying to roll off a tackle. Gain of one and a half, maybe two, on first down. Yeah, you know, uh, you know, we talk so much about Baden's defense, and I don't want to keep harping on them, but you know, just defensively, they're so good. They they're a multiple front defense. They they shift a lot and they move a lot, and uh, looks like they got a player down right now. Got an injured Ram. We'll step aside and make sure he's all right when we return. Rams lead 16-3. You're on WOSN. Out of the injury timeout, the injured Ram able to get to the sideline under his own power. So the Redskins go back to work. Moyer in a shotgun, Charlie in motion. We got a false start penalty against Wampak. Yeah, that was an obvious one. Looked like Grant Hauser got a little too excited there, and there was a miscommunication maybe coming out of the huddle, but uh, it's going to back Wampak up and really put him in a bind here with the second and long. Second down. So that's a tough penalty to take there. The ball he spotted at the 40-yard line, and they'll have to get into Ram territory, pick up a Cook and Son first down. But the clock will get back moving as they trail 16-3 to here in this Division Three regional semifinal against the Baden Rams. Baden last year played in the Division Three state championship game before falling to Chardon. Chardon took out St. Mary's on their trip there. Moyer will turn and fire to Jolly, caught at the 45-yard line, shoved out of bounds right near the midfield stripe. He did get into Hamilton Baden territory. That'll make it third and relatively short. Yeah, it's a nice pickup and really uh, <clears throat> did a nice job of picking up those yards from that penalty. And I, I really like that route, making it quick and making uh, Moyer, you know, he's had some pressure. And, you know, last series he had that big sack, but just making him get some confidence back by completing that pass. And, re and really, I think that's the second time where Wapox ran that play where uh, if Baden's going to play that deep off you, you can keep taking it. And if they're going to come up, and you'd probably like your chances of Jolly running past the defender. Yeah, and I think that, you know, Jolly's been a, He's really been an impact player this year. Getting the ball in his hands is going to be important for them. Jolly, the man in motion once again. Now's the carry. Now has the Cook and Son first down. That's a big play there on third and three. And Chase Nows picks up the Cook and Son plumbing and heating first down. That's the first time I've really seen some movement. Um, you know, most of Walpock's first downs and big gains run-wise have been sweeps and powers to the outside into the flank, but yeah. that's one of the first times I've seen some movement with them just going straight ahead. So first and 10 for the Redskins with under seven minutes to go here in this third quarter. Moyer, the freshman, will turn and fire. Has Jolly once again at the 40-yard line. Slips a tackle, pushed down at the 35-yard line, and that's another Cook and Son first down there on the reception by Jolly. Well, someone must have said, you know what Garrett Seawright's telling us to throw the ball to Grant Jolly. 
rally, and we probably need to do that because now we've done that a few times, and it's really moved the chains not only twice, but it's been a big a momentum shift for the Redskins. Well, not only is Jolly fast, he's quick. He's got, you know, he's able to change directions quickly. You saw it there. Shifty is a word I would use to describe there, where he just juked that tackler. And, and I, I, I like it when you get to see Grand Jolly have a football in his hands. Well, and even if it's a five-yard gain, it's a nice pickup, especially on first down. Max Stroh will move up to the wing spot. They'll send Nels in motion. Hand off to Nels. Nope, Moyer will keep it himself. Has blockers. Caleb Moyer. Spun down just shy of the 30-yard line, so it's a gain of four as Moyer keeps it on the quarterback, keep all the way. And that was that play that they ran earlier in the game. It's that counter, the quarterback counter with uh, the back going one direction and the line going the other direction. And uh, still another nice pickup for Walpock. And you have to think they're in four-down territory. I'm not sure they're, you know, at this point, field goals are going to help being down, you know, almost two mm -hmm. touchdowns. I mean. Um, you know, maybe I've been wrong before, I'd probably be wrong again, but uh, you know, you, you got to think four down territory here. Second and six, they'll move those two tight ends and wings to the other side and turn and pitch to Mextro. Mextro has to turn that corner and can't. It's a loss of one as they'll turn and pitch to Mextro. Mextro, but a nice chase there by the Ram D to bring him down for a loss of one. Well, Connor Mextro is a great football player, but I don't I don't think he's a side to side guy. Yeah. He's a straight ahead guy, and that was a long way to run for him to try to out, outrun people to run a fullback sweep like that. So uh, now you're in a third and long situation where you're probably going to have to look to run or throw the ball here. So third and eight into the wind with five minutes to go in the quarter. 16 to three on the Leeds Famous Recipe scoreboard. Moyer will be in the gun. Jolly will come down to the bottom of your screen. Has to get sent quickly with two seconds on the play clock. They do get it off. Moyer turns and fires to Schneider. Caught just shy of the first down stick. So fourth and short upcoming here for Wapak. Well, it's decision time. It's, you know, deciding what they're going to do. And it looks like he's going to keep the offense on the field. But, you know, it's easy for us to say up here. But, yeah, I really like these short routes. I mean, yeah. they're just really picking them apart. And Baden's really giving them, giving them those underneath routes. So they've, they've been successful with them. They'll go double tight end on fourth and one. A big play here for the Wapak Redskins. Moyer under center, looking to pick up the Cook and Son first down. Tried to bark him off sides. Didn't get there. We'll turn and get further instructions. Moyer will turn, hand off to Naus. Naus has room to run, is able to pick up the Cook and Son first down. What a great play up front. And that offensive line by Wapak just really got after it. Uh, especially Grant Childress, 5'10 senior inside. Nate Schneider, right guard, just got after it and was allowed him to get the first down. Redskins quickly back to the line. They'll hand off to Naus once again. And he's met immediately as he tried to turn the corner at the original line or at the line of scrimmage. Didn't get a yard there as uh, the Ram D came flying up to make that stop. Now, one thing I noticed about the Rams' defensive backs is that you know, they, they're aggressive in the run game. Yeah. I mean, a lot of times, you know, defensive backs like to play coverage, but they come up and they hit, and Walpox really had a hard time hitting that flank. So four approaching four minutes to go here in this third quarter. Redskins on the edge of the Matt's heating and cooling red zone at the 21-yard line. Second and 10 for the guys in white. And Jolly in motion once again. And a false start against the Redskins. Well, that's first call of the quarter, brought to you by Frost Roofing, family owned and operated for over 90 years. Join the Frost family. They're an equal opportunity employer. Call 419-739-ROOF. So the snap infraction, not the false start. Nonetheless, Redskins go back five yards. Well, the beauty of trades and shifts and motions is, is that it's complicated for the defense. The bad part about trades and shifts and motions is it's complicated for the offense, too. And, you know, that you had that time to time as a guy, you know, uh, the center will snap it early or not snap it at all, and then you'll get a false start. Jolly in motion once again on second and 15. Nouse on the counter. Nouse has one man to beat. He's brought down just shy of the line of scrim original line of scrimmage at the 22-yard line, 23-yard line, I guess, is where they'll spot him. So third and long upcoming here for the Redskins. Last time they got kind of in a situation, they had that big play uh, on the screen to Mextro. Is that something we could see here again? You know, it, it would be a good call. I know you're, you're 
close to the red zone, so you'd say, why run a screen here? Well, they were successful with it because Baden's defensive line is so aggressive. I also think one of those quick routes that we've seen them run the last two times would be something you'd want to look for, too. Jolly and Schneider to the bottom of your screen. They'll hand off to Nels. Nels a blocker in front of him inside the Matt's heating and cooling red zone to make it fourth and a little bit more manageable. We'll see what they do here as it looks like the field goal unit is going to come back on as Kyle Beach hit one from roughly the same spot at the end of the first half. Now the wind's died down just a little bit, but that's still a pretty strong wind pushing back in the face of Kyle Beach. Yeah, and you, when you say a little bit, Garrett, it, like one mile an hour has <laughs> died down. So it's going to be it's going to be a tough field goal here for Kyle Beach once again. But we doubted him the first time, or at least I did. So I have full confidence in him this time. So 35 yards out, Beach. That one much easier. And it's through the uprights and good. 16-6 now the score on the Lee's Famous recipe scoreboard. We'll snap aside. More third quarter action coming up. Wapak trailing by 10 here in the Division Three Regional Semifinals on WOSN. Instant replays tonight brought to you by Owl's Woody's Diner in Wapakoneta. It's the best place for pizza, wings, subs, and burgers. Call 419-738-9111. We appreciate them helping bring you high school football tonight here on WOSN. 16-6 the score. Redskins trail. 38 and 35 yard field goals for Kyle Beach. They're scoring for the Redskins is that 35 yard field goal a little easier for, for Kyle Beach than the 38 yard one. Beach will send it away. Squibber caught by the Rams up at the 30-yard line. Got a little bit of room to run before he's brought down. Kohler the stop for Wapak as Brayton Moore on a return to the 40-yard line. Well, you can't say enough about Wapak and how they just have fought back. You know, this game, I don't want to say it could have got out of hand at different times, but there could have been moments where Baden has taken a big lead and Wapak has just hung in there and really uh, punched back, I guess is the nicest way to say it. And just uh, now they're in a situation where you're coming up to the end of the third quarter, you're really down a score and a half. You're, you're in position to potentially win this game. Well, even uh, mentally tough. Uh, there's been a couple yeah. times where the Rams have had pretty good opportunities to score and, and have it as Rousseau gets the carry out to the 45-yard line, cut down, and a penalty flag well after Rousseau goes down. We'll see what that call is as Tyler Hauser on the stop and a holding call against the Rams. First down. Well, you get a Bronx cheer from the Redskin faithful. Uh, when you can hear it from all the way across the field and on top of the press box in this wind, uh, it must have been a hearty cheer there from the Redskins, but it is a 10-yard uh, penalty. It did come down a little late, and, you know, I, I'm not an official and would never second-guess what they do, but there's been a lot of holding going on tonight. I, I really actually think they've done a good job of keeping the – the flags in their pockets because you know in a situation like this in a big playoff game you don't want to see flag after flag no. after flag but at some point when it's holding and it's on the outside you got to call it and, and I know coaches don't like those holding calls either but sometimes it's so you know egregious or out outlandish or just prevalent that you can't you can't not call it well they're getting they're getting scouted and rated too and they want to go on to the next playoff so they got to call the, the game's fair ritzy and a gun looking to throw Fires nearly intercepted. It was in the hands of Jace Mullen, and he couldn't corral it. Might have broke his concentration that it was tipped, but the freshman nearly had a big turnover for the Redskins. Man, that would have been a big play. And I think, like you said, maybe the, the concentration got broke there because it hit him in a bad spot, Garrett, right in the hands. And uh, I'll tell you, that, that was a – we have not really seen uh, Baden throw no. the ball. I mean, they just have strayed away from the passing game 100%. And Wapak is answering to, to this call here. Second and 20. Rams in the gun with the wind at their back. They're going to be going into it in the fourth quarter. With 1.45 to go on the least famous recipe scoreboard, that might be playing into their hands here, thinking this might be one of the final times we can throw the football. As Ritzy drops back to pass. Ball's too high for the intended target. I believe that's number 10, Dominic Pate, was the intended receiver. And that'll bring up third and 20 here. And I think Baden's kind of, they're kind of out of their sorts right now. You can see that they're not as comfortable. Uh, early in the game, you could you could see they had a plan, they had a scheme, they had things they wanted to do, and now they're kind of outside of that. And 
I don't want to say Walpock is gaining momentum, but I think that they're gaining some confidence for sure. Absolutely. Third and 20. Big play for this Redskin D once again, trying to make sure Baden doesn't pick up the Cooking Sun first down. They'll sling it to Moore on the bubble screen. Has some blockers out to the 40-yard line where the drive started. So Braylon Moore, really his second reception of the night, and both of them have come on bubble screens, just easy pitches and catches. So it's still fourth and nine, and the Baden punt unit will come on the field. Well, and it's kind of remarkable because when they've run that bubble screen, they've got good yards. I mean, yeah. he's a beast. I mean, he's, you know, and that gives that the Alex Ritzy confidence to complete those passes. So they'll punt it away. High spiraling kick goes to the far side of the field, bounces the 21-yard line, takes a redskin bounce, and out of play with 61 seconds remaining here in this third quarter. So Wapak starting to build a little momentum here, John, as we go to the end of this third quarter. I think if you're Wapak, you feel really good about what you've done and how you've hung in there. And uh, offensively, you're gonna get the ball going with the wind here in the fourth quarter. If they can put a drive together and get something going and get a touchdown, you know, that's one thing they haven't done. They haven't been able to put the ball in the end zone. Um, they've, they've depended on Kyle Beach's leg, but if they can do that and get a score, man, we might have an exciting game here come the fourth quarter. So. The Redskins still looking for their first Allen Davis Insurance touchdown. Allen Davis Insurance is your solutions provider. Specializing in auto, home, business insurance, and more. First and 10, not sure what the conference is here between the officials. I believe we'll get an explanation. All right, so the Redskins get a sideline warning. Probably has to do with the nine coaches that are on the field right now. <laughs> but that's just my guess. <laughs> just a hunch, educated guess maybe. <laughs> so one minute, one second remain of the third quarter. Redskins trail by 10, 16-6. Put together a couple of nice drives here. One turnover inside the Matt's heating and cooling red zone and a pair of Kyle Beach field goals is what has resulted in their drives here tonight. And Really, uh, it's kind of been a tale of two halves here, or Wapak here in the second half has been pretty successful in doing pretty much whatever they want to offensively. Yeah, physically up front, they've matched Baden. In fact, I think they've they've got the edge on them. Mouse takes the handoff. He'll get to the line of scrimmage. I don't know that he got any farther than that. It'll be second or 10. It's going to be tough, I think, to run the ball inside like that. I, you know, I think that I, I like when they really try to attack the edge and, and run the power and uh, get those guards out there. And, um, you know, Baden's proven time and time again defensively inside. They, they've they been uh, uh, just done a great job. Potential final play of the quarter upcoming here is Moyer under center, tripped and fell. I believe they were going to run a play action pass looking to go deep. Moyer got tripped up. And it'll be third and 14 when the fourth quarter begins. Well, that's unfortunate because, uh, you know, like you said, I think it looked like it was going to be a play action pass off of the off the sweep fake. And now you're just in a position that you're not typically in and you probably don't have, you know, very many plays for third and 15. So you're going to have to search through the playbook to find one. Redskins will have the wind at their back in the fourth quarter, trailing 16-6 on the Lee's Famous Recipe scoreboard. We'll step us on and come back with fourth quarter action here are the Division Three Regional Semifinals on WOSN. Tonight's ball game brought to you by Frost Roofing, family owned and operated for over 90 years. Join the Frost family, they're an equal opportunity employer. Call 419-739-ROOF. Third and 14 here for the Redskins. They do have the wind at their back though, as the shotgun snap goes to Moyer. Stands in the pocket and turns and fires, looking for a receiver. Did Jordan Schneider, oh, he didn't catch that ball, but Jordan Schneider nearly came down with a acrobatic one-handed catch. Couldn't corral it, and it looks like the Redskins are gonna be forced to punt. Yeah, he had a hand on it. I thought he actually had it. He came down with it, like you said, and I think the Walpark crowd did too, because there was a you know, large gasp from <laughs> I was gonna him, say, I, the, the reason I knew he didn't catch it was because I couldn't see the football, but I heard the, <gasps> no! That was the only way I knew he didn't grab the football. I gotta give a, a lot of credit to Caleb Moyer, though. He stood back in the pocket back there and you know he's just a freshman and he's got such composure and yeah. really laid a nice ball out there stepped up in the pocket and uh, was a nice throw. Kyle Beach with the wind at his back last time a touchback is this one 
Going to be caught at the 30-yard line, so still a nice punt there by Beach. There's a block in the back. It's not called. Uh, <laughs> uh, the returner. I, it just everybody. I thought everybody in the stadium saw Jay Smolin uh, get shoved in the back as, you know, he's the only guy in white uh, approaching the punt returner, but nobody else saw it, apparently. And the Baton Rams will start at the 45-yard line. You know, I used to have players tell me all the time, Coach, he hit me in the back and this and that, and I would, you know, say the same thing, you know. Unfortunately, it was not called, so it's not a penalty, right. you know. If the right guy didn't see it, then it doesn't matter if the rest of us saw it. So the Rams will go back to work, leading by 10 here in this fourth quarter. 16-6. to six. They haven't put an Allen Davis insurance touchdown on the board in a long time either. Ritzy in the gun will hand off to Russo. Russo off tackle right side is met immediately by Grant Jolly. Now he's able to spin out to the mountain, the 46 yard line. So a gain of two, but a nice stop by Grant Jolly, the sophomore cornerback. Yeah, I think you're going to hear Grant Jolly's name a lot the next two years, like early in the year. He's pretty dynamic as a receiver. It's been kind of a quiet night tonight for him, but in that last series uh, uh, before the, the, the previous one, he you know had a couple of nice catches, but Defensively, he's aggressive. Not only does he cover well, but he comes when he tackles well, too. Second and eight upcoming for the guys in green. Ritzy, three wide receivers to his left. Braden Moore, the middle receiver. Now turn and fire. Joey Truesdale able to hang on by the jersey. My goodness, we'll see if we can't get an Alice Buddy's Diner instant replay there. But what a great tackle by Joey Truesdale. Just holding on for dear life. And that jersey's got a little more give than you think. Now Carson Cheek was number 21. Let's put it that way. Uh, now he's probably number right, two right, or number, number two one. Or one. one yeah. of them got ripped off. Yeah, great job by Joey Truesdale. Like you said, just hanging on and making a really good play. And uh, really, that could have been a big gain for Hamilton Baden. So Truesdale did a good job of preventing that third and ten another big play for this redskin D three down linemen and three bunch receivers for the Rams Redskins will send a blitz missed Ritzy still up and finally gonna be brought down in the open field Jaden Rampula the stop they don't pick up the Cook and Son first down. It'll be fourth and about five for Baden. They did it. They, I really like what Coach Nick Truesdale, defensive coordinator here at Walpock, did schematically. He brought a delayed bricks, uh, delayed blitz with Connor Mextro. The only problem was is that uh, Connor didn't have any brakes on the gas, so he kind of <laughs> ran uh, right by Alex Ritzy, but just enough for Jaden Rampula makes a big stop, and now that uh, Baden's going to have to punt into the wind. Fourth and four. See if the Rams get tricky. They do not. Ball will be sent away. It's a high spiraling kick. Fair caught by Jolly. The 21-yard line. So 9.29 to go. And the Redskins need to put something together here. Limited opportunities with the football here in this fourth quarter upcoming. Well, and I think you just said it, you know. Now you're in that situation where this is it. This is the fourth quarter. There may not be another series. There may not be another drive. And uh, I think you got to, you know, to not take the words out of uh, Dan Fouts from the water boy, but you got to <laughs> let it all hang out here, you know. Last game of the year. Can't hold anything back now, That's right? <laughs> Moyer goes under center. Jolly in motion. They'll fake the handoff, look to throw. Moyer rolling, will fire, and it's intercepted once again. Picked off by the Baden Rams is Drew Enginger. Enginger makes the interception. Second one thrown by the Redskins tonight. Third turnover overall, and the Rams get the football right back. And that's just a, a rookie mistake. I mean, he had his tight end open. He just he just threw it a little late and a little bit behind him. But, you know, I like the aggressiveness by Coach Moyer to to run kind of the old wing T waggle. I mean, they haven't, we haven't seen it. I think they tried to run it, you know, maybe a few plays ago when uh, there was a, a mix-up in the backfield. But but a big stop for Baton here. Now the Walpog defense is back, you know, up against the, the wall again, and they're going to have to step up and make a stop here. 9.22 to go in this fourth quarter. Baden with a 10-point lead on the least famous recipe scoreboard. Ball loose. I don't know how it got in the hands of Carter Russo. I don't know that he does Ball's either. Down. Actually, it's y Yordy. Yordy fumbled, and the Redskins have the football. Wampok with the turnover as Jaden Rampula pounces on it. We trade turnovers, and the football goes back to the boys in white. 
I'll tell you, the Wapak defense has just been lights out in the second half. Whenever they've needed something to happen, a stop or a momentum change or some kind of big play, their defense has stepped up and made that play. So the ball at the 40-yard line, Wapak actually gets a little field position on the, on the trade of the turnovers. I'm sure that they would like to have just kept the football the whole time. But nonetheless, Redskins get the football back, trailing by 10 as we trade turnovers between the Rams and Redskins. Well, I don't, you can't stop your aggressiveness now. you got to keep coming at him. And, you know, Moyer, he's, uh, he's, he's growing up quick in this situation. And another false start penalty. That's the third false start penalty here tonight in this second half, and it's the first call of the quarter brought to you by Frost Roofing. Frost Roofing, family-owned and operated for over 90 years. Join the Frost family. They're an equal opportunity employer. Call them at 419-739-ROOF. So first and 10 turns into first and 15 before they get a snap off. Well, and, and you don't want to do that. You can't, obviously, at this point of the season, having false starts. But I think that, you know, one of the things that we talked about was they're going to have to do some different things. And with different things comes less practice time. And so now that you're in some unfamiliar formations, and you can see some of the confusion. So we're asking for two seconds added back to the Lee's Famous Recipe scoreboard. So Wapak first and 15 from their own 35-yard line. 9-13 to go. Schneider at the bottom of your screen as is Jolly. They'll turn and fire to Will Campbell. He caught the football back at the line of scrimmage, original line of scrimmage. Maybe a yard past it. Gain of six there on first down. Great throw. Great throw, great catch. Um, and Baden's playing straight man to man. You can see the guys on the outside, they're even coming up and pressing, but uh, that's what you need to do. You just need to get those completions and get some of that first, uh, uh, that, that penalty, penalty yardage back now so that you're in striking distance to maybe get a first down. Moyer and Nelson in the backfield. Schneider and Jolly to the bottom of your screen. They'll hand off to Nels. Nels reverses field, hit from behind. Back to the line of scrimmage, no farther. And it'll be third and long here for Wampong. You know, that screen you talked about earlier, this would probably be one of those times where, you know, a screen uh, to one of your older guys here might be a good idea. But also, you know, if they're playing off that off coverage a little bit, I know they're playing man to man, but, uh, you know, they, they trust that these guys can run, these Baden defensive backs, so maybe a quick hitch here as well. Have to get to midfield to pick up the Cook and Son first down. Eight minutes to go here in tonight's ball game. Moyer in the gun, turns, fires, caught by Grant Hauser. He's got the Cook and Son first down and more to the 45-yard line. What a beautiful, beautiful route by Grant Hauser. He does a good job of letting that clear out, that outside receiver ran a go route and cleared it out, and then he ran kind of a, a, a go and out, and he kind of made a, a great cut. And Caleb Moyer just put the ball on a spot that was absolutely perfect. Great Cook and Son first down, moves the chains, and they're into Baden territory. Trailing by 10 with 7.40 to go. Moyer will look to throw once again. Hangs and fires. Caught by Jolly. I'll say it was caught. There was shrieks of horror that Jolly might have dropped the football from the Redskin faithful. Nonetheless, it's an eight-yard gain. It brings up second and short. Well, I know we're about three miles away from the field, Garrett, but it did look like he was kind of juggling it a little bit, but he must have got that one foot down. And like we've said over and over, Grant Jolly, there's that name. We didn't hear much of it in the first half, but he's been a real, real uh, contributor here in the second half. Second and two. Gives you plenty of options out of the playbook. Moyer rolling. Throws to Schneider. He's got the Cook and Son first down and more. Very close to the Matt's heating and cooling red zone. As a 23-yard gain there for Jordan Schneider. Puts the Redskins in business. Well, and, and I think this is as unfamiliar as it is for Walpock, and maybe they've practiced this stuff, you know, at practice, but they haven't shown a lot of it in games. It's very unfamiliar for Baden. They have not scouted this coming from Walpock, and so they're kind of in uh, unfamiliar territory as well. Ball to 23-yard line, first and 10. Moyer with two wide receivers split out wide to each side. Stands in the pocket, takes a hit as he fires. It'll too high for Grant Jolly. 
Well, and we've seen him try to stick it into windows that, you know, that shouldn't have been stuck into, and that was a good decision there to just kind of throw it away and, and, and give a, a clean start here on second down. Yeah, and that's... I, 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 when, as a quarterback, do you learn that kind of live to fight another day mentality? Because you, you're trained to, you know, give 100% all the time, go as hard as you can, and then well, you get to play varsity quarterback, and you're like, hey, sometimes it's all right to go down. Sometimes it's all right to throw the That's football right. away. Well, and when you've been picked twice today, it's it's kind of like, okay, I, I get the message. And, you know, you go to the sideline, I'm sure Dad's telling him, throw that ball away. Moyer, trouble with the snap, turns and fires, threw it to the outside of Campbell as he turned inside, couldn't connect. It'll bring up third and ten. They had him. I mean, they they really had the uh, Campbell did a good job of getting into the to the void of the of the zone there, and I think just the snap. You know, uh, Moyer didn't realize he did have as much time as he as he as he did, and and tried to I think hastily throw it. So third and ten upcoming, just under seven minutes to go. Redskins could really use an Allen Davis insurance touchdown to cut this lead down from its current ten point spread. Moyer will send two receivers to the left and two to the right. Nels joins him in the backfield. Moyer stands in the pocket, steps up, evades one tackler, can't evade the second, brought down right at the line of scrimmage, and it'll bring up fourth and ten. Well, and, you know, you'd think here they need to go for it, but here comes the field goal unit, and I, I think it's a good decision because Kyle Beach has been automatic tonight. If you can get that, that ninth point on the scoreboard, now that puts you within a touchdown. Um, I think this is a good decision here to, to go for a field goal. So Kyle Beach from 41 yards out this time with the wind at his back, the first time with the wind at his back tonight on his two previous field goal attempts. That field goal attempt is up and good. Wow. So a 41-yard field goal attempt from Kyle Beach makes it 16 to 9 with 6.17 to go in tonight's fourth quarter here on WOSM. Tonight's Red Zone sponsor is Matt's Heating and Cooling. Is your home in the energy efficient zone? Call Matt's Heating and Cooling or go to Matt's, call mattsheating.com to schedule your free estimate. 16 to 9, so a one score game here in the fourth quarter. Division three regional semifinals. Winner moves on to play Western Brown or Tip City Tippecanoe in the regional finals at a site to be determined next Friday night. Kyle Beach likely to put this ball in the end zone for a touchback. Kyle Beach has shown what a weapon a good kicker can be. I mean, he has kept them in this game, um, not only with uh, his uh, you know field goals tonight, but you know punts, yeah, kickoffs, making, making Baden go 80 yards every time yeah. he gets the ball. I mean, he has been an absolute weapon tonight. And it's such a valuable weapon that not many in high school football have. Where you know how many kids could have made that 38-yard field goal in the first half? Not many. Not many. <laughs> not many. No, you're exactly right. And not only with the wind in your face, but also just getting it through the uprights. I mean, that's the other part right. of it is trying to, you know, get it through the actual uprights. Right. Keep it plenty of leg, but yep. making knowing where it's going once you boot it is the name of the game. That's a false start, but it wasn't called. So they'll pitch it to Cheek. Scored a touchdown on that play in the first half. Onto the 24-yard line, so gain of four for Baden. Well, I think the Walpaw coaches were agreeing with you, Garrett, because I've seen about five of them jump on the field when that happened, and uh, it's a little surprising that they didn't get that uh, call there. But uh, you know, they got that little play that's uh, it's a little—I don't even know what you call it. It's a little—it's a sweep, but it's a right, forward it's a pass. Technical, it's technically a pass, but. I got eyes. It's not a pass. <laughs> it's it's annoying, is what pass. I call it. I, it's not a pass, in my opinion. That's if a high to... percentage pass. It's high percentage <laughs> as it gets. Those would be the type of passes I would be good at completing. <laughs> <laughs> Baden sends a man in motion. They'll pitch to Russo. Russo cut down Jay Smolin on the tackle, as is Connor Mextro. Gain of two yards, three yards. Will bring up third and very short for this Wapak defense. You hate to sound cliche, Garrett, but you know, this play right here is kind of what you work in the offseason for, weight yeah, room, no. all the stuff. Like it's this is playoff football, third and one, game on the line. This is for everything right here. You're probably muscle on muscle here. It's Ritzy in the gun with two backs joining him. Offset. He'll hand off to Russo. Russo has the cooking son first down. 
and barely. I mean, that Walpock defense was stingy. Russo just did enough, uh, just found the seam just enough to get the first down. Redskins still have all three Metzger Financial Services timeout in their pocket. It's 4.45, remains on the least famous recipe scoreboard. Well, I think if you're Walpock, you might want to, I mean, you're not quite there yet, but you do have three timeouts, so you might want to start thinking about when and where you can use these timeouts. Right, he's in the gun with Russo offset, and he'll get the handoff. Met immediately by the Redskin defensive line, Caden Ware making the initial contact. Now Redskin defensive line is hugging there tough all night. Jaden Rampules made some plays. Caden Ware's made some plays. Mikey Lee, Tyler Hauser, they have done what they can to help out that defensive effort. Yeah, and I think they kind of started slow, and that's, you know, that's understandable uh, going against a team and you're not familiar with. And, uh, but they've really ramped it up. And, and you know, I, I said early that they're going to have to step it up. They have done that. They've had a really uh, nice defensive game uh, tonight, especially holding a, a team like Baden, who averages so many points a game to 16 so far. Our line of Chevrolet Cadillac keys to the game included winning the line of scrimmage. Wapak has done a much better job of that here in the second half as Russo gets the carry, and he's got the cooking Son first down and more. Tackled by Grant Jolly, but that'll move the chains and keep the ball in Baden's hands. Yeah, big play by Russo. That was something that... Hamilton Beta needed right now. They needed for that first down to happen, and, and he got it. And now they're really in a driver's seat. I think if you're Walpock, you're going to have to look at spinning these timeouts sometime yep. soon. So the clock starts ticking again once the ball's been spotted. The nose of the football right at that 45-yard line. Seven-point lead for the Rams. Redskins need a stop. Redskins last year fell by one score to a Southwestern Ohio squad, Bellbrook, 42-35. In the second round of the playoffs, Baden defeated St. Mary's. Russo the carry. And a timeout called by Wapak. So they'll take the Metzger Financial Services timeout. Three minutes to go, we'll step aside as well. More fourth quarter action coming up on WOSN. Tonight's game brought to you in part by Lima Chevrolet Cadillac, the area's premier Chevrolet and Cadillac dealer in the greater Lima area, serving Lima for over 100 years. They're proud to call this home. Second and eight for the Rams. I'll have Braden Moore in at quarterback. The D1 wide receiver looking for room to run. Reverses field, has some blockers. Powers through Grant Jolly and picks up the cook and sun first down. Lost his helmet, though. Might have to come out for a play. Yeah, he's going to have to come out for a play, but it was worth it because, my goodness, you put him. You know, we really have not seen them run that formation. I think they ran it earlier, and uh, some players are trying to calm him down here a little bit. But, uh, you know, when they put him in the backfield, man, he is elusive. So, looks like they're going to allow him. Nope, no, no, the official is saying he's got to go. It doesn't really matter how that helmet comes off. He was, I, he was trying to argue, I got ripped off. I don't. Well, if it gets ripped off, that's a penalty. And I don't see any flags, right. you know what I mean? Say, so uh, the head coach, is, uh, Nick Yorty, is saying, hey, you, helmet got ripped off now. Nobody saw it yet. So we'll see what the call is. It's not going to be a popular one with the Redskins faithful if they reverse that and say it was a penalty. Now they're going to allow Brayton Moore back in the ballgame. I disagree with that. I mean, every time I've seen that, if I was Coach Moyer, I'd be pretty upset with that call because. He's, he's about out to the numbers yeah. and the official on the far side is yep. saying, yeah, you can go ahead and get back. Well, like, you know, just like we said, you know, if a helmet comes off, the rule is the player comes out of the game. Right. You know, it's cut and dry. There is not a whole lot yeah, of. And, and, and you and I both seen that. Helmet right. came off. I'm not even sure he was completely down yet when the helmet came off. So. Um, you know, I'm not sure what the decision was on the field. So the clock starts after the first down. 2.50 to go. Wampok still with two Metzger Financial Services timeouts. As Baden content to watch that clock tick, 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 tick. Yeah, and if you're a Wampok, you're just, this is just like, 
This is like agony, because you know that they're just going to let that clock roll, and you can't do anything about it right now. Braden Moore lined up at quarterback once again. Now he did try to throw the football one time, and now Baden wants a timeout. I'm not sure why, certain why Braden, Baden wants a timeout, but we'll take it with him. 2.22 to go in the fourth on WOSN. Extra points tonight brought to you by Binkley Real Estate. They have an effective sales approach, efficient marketing campaigns, and an extensive network that will get you results that move you. First and 10 for the Rams after some discombobulation here in the final quarter. 16-9, they lead on first and 10. Redskins need a stop and a football back. Ritzy in the gun. Russo, the handoff. Carter Russo bounces it outside to the 40-yard line. Russo. Gain of about six there on first down for Russo. Pick up about five on the play. Yeah, and you're going to see Walpock use one of their <clears throat> two timeouts that are left here. And, you know, this is going to just be a, a point timeout. here where the next uh, minute or so you're going to see uh, timeouts exactly. being used. But Coach Moyer's still upset. I mean, he's still kind of arguing about uh, uh, player being allowed to come back in the in the game after uh, the helmet came off, and I don't blame him. Well, and you know that player's a Division One Power Five wide receiver. That, you know, could be the difference between right. um, you know a first down or a touchdown or the game. And so I understand the the frustration as they take the Metzger Financial Services timeout. Timeouts tonight are brought to you by Metzger Financial Services, helping you plan your financial future. Visit MetzgerFinancialServices.com. So 16-9 the score. Second and five upcoming for the Rams. And they called the timeout the last time where they had Braden Moore lined up at the quarterback spot. Obviously saw something they didn't like. But is that something that we could see again here in the closing stages? Now, obviously, you want you know, your quarterback to have the football. But a, conceivably, Braden Moore is your best player, and you want – him to have the football as well? Well, I just think he, he just hasn't got the touches tonight. And you got a guy, like you said, going to play Cincinnati, and the wind has kind of been hectic, and you haven't been able to throw the ball effectively. The only other way you can get him the ball is to, you know, uh, put, not put him under center, but put him in the shotgun. But, you know, I think right now Russo is the guy you want to get the ball to. He's been effective, and he's protected the football. Second and five. Russo, the carry. Russo turns the corner, has the first down. Another Cook and Sons first down for Carter Russo. And just one more Metzger Financial Services timeout remaining for the Wampak Redskins. You know, Carter Russo has just been solid. I mean, anytime they needed a play or something, he's just been there, and he's just kind of been the guy they've leaned on. And they've got some really nice-looking athletes on this field, but he's been the one that's just been really consistent. So under two minutes to go on the Lee's Famous Recipe scoreboard. Redskins trailing by a touchdown. The clock, however, ticking, not in their favor. As Ritzy will line back up in the shotgun. Russo, the hot hand here in the second half for the Rams, joins him in the backfield. He'll take the carry. Russo straight up the middle inside to Matt's heating and cooling red zone. And a Metzger Financial Services timeout called by the Redskins. 1.31 to go. We'll step aside as well. The conclusion of this ball game coming up here on WOSN. Touchdown tonight brought to you by Allen Davis Insurance, your solutions provider specializing in auto, home, business insurance, and more. As the Wapak Redskins trying to avoid an Allen Davis Insurance touchdown. A handoff to Carter Russo. Russo inside the five-yard line. And that will move the chains for a Cook and Son first down. Penalty flag well after the play. Likely an unsportsmanlike conduct penalty. Yeah, you didn't see anything physically, but you know something's probably being said at this point. And, you know, the frustration is there. Obviously, you yeah. know, Wapox played a tough game, and they've really uh, risen to this occasion. And, you know, there's some emotions just kind of rolling out right now. And there are some, there are magic words you can say that's going to make a official throw their penalty flag. No matter the down distance situation, what have you. And that'll move it deeper inside to Matt's heating and cooling red zone. The ball spotted at the seven-yard line and 90 seconds to play. 
Well, and if you're baiting, you know, you, you really could go into the victory formation, take a knee and get out of here. I don't know if that's what they'll do, but right. th at this point, you know, Wapak's had a timeout. So the game is in your reach, and uh, they, they've just, you know, they've weathered the storm. That's about the best way I can say it. I, you know, after having a very impressive first half, I feel like Walpock is, is, you know, not only points-wise won the second half, but physicality and, and everywhere else just outplayed Baden. But unfortunately, you know, the score still replicates. Uh, Baden's going to get out of here and win this game. Yeah, and Walpock's won a miracle game once this season against Van Wert. The black punch, touchdown return, blocked punt return for a touchdown by Jordan Schneider uh, in week, I think, four. Um, and Baden, you know, you're kind of in a situation of if you're going to snap the football, you might as well try to go win the football game. But looks like they're going to line up in a victory formation. and. Snap the football and try to salt this one away. Well, it's a it's a classy way to, to get out of here. You know, there's no reason to to score another one, and uh, there's no there's no time left. You know, and to me, I was always worried about you know coaches are always like let's score, let's you know. Right. I was always worried about hey, what about if we fumble and somebody picks it up and you know just like the block punt, you know, what about something like that happens and. With four seconds to go, you lose when you should have won. So this is the safe thing to do. So Baden has to snap it one more time. And that will do it. Hamilton Baden will survive, move to 13-0, and move on to the regional finals for a 16-9 victory over the Wampak Redskins. A valiant effort by Wampak. Weren't able to get an Allen Davis insurance touchdown on the board. Baden and Hamilton Baden wins 16 to 9, the final score on the Lee's famous recipe scoreboard. Final thoughts from tonight's football game here, John? Well, I'll tell you, just hard played game, you know, and points were not easy to come by. I, you know, I were thinking maybe there'd be more points on the scoreboard, and, you know, typically, you know, these kind of games, defense is what's going to win you the game, and you've seen two great efforts by both defenses. Walpuck has nothing to be ashamed of. I know it's not a moral victory, but what a great season for the Walpuck Redskins. So the Redskins season comes to a close. They fall tonight 16-9. They finish the season 11-2, and and when you look at the teams they lost to, they lost in week one to Marion Local, who many believe is the presumptive favorite to win the Division Six state championship. And Hamilton Baden played in the state championship game a season ago. So nothing to hang your hands about if you're a Wapak Redskin fan. 11 consecutive victories, a Western Buckeye League championship. And Jace Naus is a junior. Caleb Moyer is a freshman. Uh, Grant Jolly is a sophomore. Jace Mullen is a freshman. They have a lot of returning guys next year that are going to keep them near the upper echelon of the Western Buckeye League. You now the future is really bright, and I know that they've got uh, some young classes that were undefeated at the junior high level that are coming up and are finally going to get their chance to shine. And you know they just got to keep this train rolling, keep the thing moving, and there's going to be a lot of success for the Redskins coming in the future. So congratulations to the Wampak Redskins on a great season. We appreciate all of our advertisers tonight here on WOSN, Lima Chevrolet Cadillac, Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, Al's Woody's Diner, Cook and Son, Plumbing and Heating, Frost Roofing, Matt's Heating and Cooling, Allen Davis Insurance, Pinkley Real Estate, and Metzger Financial Services for their patronage tonight here on WOSN. For our fantastic crew and John Zerby, I'm Garrett Seawright saying so long from Trotwood Madison, the final score, the final time, 16-9 here on WOSN.